Hey everyone, it's Paul with you once again for B Movie Mania interviews. I am so thrilled that I got a chance to sit down and chat with actor Sarah Nicklin, and we talk about lots of stuff, so we're going to get to that momentarily. But real quick, uh, if this happens to be your first time listening to B Movie Mania, you know, consider uh, subscribing to the podcast. We're on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, all the podcast places. Uh, or simply you can go to bmoviemania.com and check us out. We would very much appreciate it. You can also connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and uh, Uncle Lloyd will tell you more about that at the end of the interview. But right now, let's get into it. Here's my interview with the wonderful and talented Sarah Nicklin. It's B Movie Mania! Mania! Sarah, welcome to B Movie Mania. Thank you for having me. It is so great to finally get a chance to chat with you. We've kind of known about each other for a while, but this is our first time meeting and getting a chance to chat, so it's good. Yeah, absolutely. And finally getting being able to set this up since we were trying to do that for right. a little while also. So. LA life. Yeah, it happens. <laughs> happens to the best of us. <laughs> it does. Um, you know, for any of our listeners who might not be familiar with you or your work, you're an actor and a producer here in L.A. Just talk a little bit about, you know, what it is you do. Um, so mostly mostly acting, mostly stuff in front of the camera. Um, I, the majority of the work that I've done has been in um, independent films. So I think I have 77 credits whoa <laughs> on IMDb right now I think um and I've done more that didn't get up there because they didn't get finished or didn't get distributed or you know whatever because that happens um yeah and I've done a little producing here and there as well um you know trying to just move things forward and get stuff done um but acting is really my main passion um most of those are like genre horror film stuff but I don't do only horror films <laughs> I do a variety of different types of genres it's just um, once you get involved in that community it's just kind of a snowball effect and you know it just keep, runs away with it so my next question was going to be do you know how many movies you've done so 77 is the unofficial sort of or, I mean, the, or the official, I guess, on IMDb. I guess that's the official on IMDb. But IMDb also has, like... And I don't even know how it got on there. It has, like, extra work that I did. Like, before I even knew what, like, movies... Like, how movies worked or anything. IMDb is an enigma. I don't understand how it works. I don't either. And the the process to, like, get stuff, like, updated or removed... Because I've tried to get that extra stuff off there. Because who cares if you were, you know... <laughs> law student whatever and whatever like nobody cares and they don't they don't take it down they're like no we are the definitive database on everything and i'm like no nope, nobody cares just get rid of it like yeah. it's not <laughs> it's a strange strange system exactly <laughs> um now if i'm not mistaken you got married pretty recently to uh jonathan taylor thomas <laughs> <laughs> right? Do I have that right? Yes. Sweet. Oh my god. <laughs> I've done my homework. My eight-year-old little girl in, inside me. All of her dreams are coming true. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Why? Thank you. <laughs> no. Um. Well, I don't know. Do you want to talk about your childhood? Sure. Yeah. Or do you want to talk about who you actually got married to? <laughs> it's up well, to you. Sure. No, absolutely. Um, so my, the whole reason I started acting was because I was obsessed with Jonathan Taylor Thomas. Um, and so that was my, you know, big grant scheme when I was, you know, in middle school, elementary school, whatever is like, oh, I'll just become, you know, a big famous actress, like easy, no problem. Right. Because all the actors, obviously they all know each other. So <laughs> just one big club. Just, just one club, exactly. So if I just I just become an actress, then I'll meet Jonathan Diller Thomas and we'll fall in love and we'll get married. And that was like my giant goal <laughs> as a child. Um, so I started acting and uh, as soon as I could, pretty much as soon as the first opportunity presented itself, which was a play in middle school called Bye Bye Birdie. And then, um, yeah, just kept doing plays from then on I did my first independent film right out of high school before going to college and um, yeah pretty much 
didn't look, haven't looked back ever since. I mean, not obsessed with Jonathan Taylor Thomas anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but I got to ask, did you ever get a chance to meet him? No, I have not met him Maybe ever. Maybe one of these days. Maybe. I don't know what happened to him. He kind of just hmm. like, he he was, you know, child star and then like fell off the, the face of the planet. So I don't know. I mean, I, I've seen him pop up like once in a while, but I feel like he's kind of quit acting and is yeah. doing other stuff. Yeah, I can't say that I really keep tabs on him too no. closely. <laughs> Really? <laughs> yeah, sorry. Um, do you want to talk about Sean? Oh, or? yeah, sure. But in my real life, <laughs> um, we, we got engaged, so we haven't officially gotten married oh, yet. Oh, okay, sorry. I, I jumped the gun a little that's bit. That's fine. We're in the process of trying to plan and like find a venue and all that sort of stuff so i shot weddings for uh eight years so i, oh, I get wow. it yeah no it's, it's a process it is a process like and it's an expensive process <laughs> so uh, probably will end up being early next year at some point this is kind of what we're thinking right now cool. so awesome. yeah oh and yeah and that guy my fiance <laughs> i didn't say his name it's right. sean decker so <laughs> he just uh kind of got like a new job right with a with a different company do you want to talk about that yeah um he so he's currently working as the director of development um for the conley company which is a young emerging um film production company the first film they did is called um a christmas in new york and that was released i think the end of November um, by Gravitas Ventures and then the next film that they completed was The Basement which is like a horror psychological thriller um, and that is something that's currently seeking distribution and then they have a couple other projects that they're working on internally as far as development for future things. Gravitas is that napkin company. You always see the napkin logo. I they... think you're right. <laughs> I, I remember like cursive handwriting. Yeah, I think so, it's on but, a with, but on a napkin. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, now you mentioned that you do a lot of different types of projects. Do you gravitate towards horror because um, I, I know that you touched on it, but is it something that you enjoy doing? Kind of doing the more horrific type of movies. I, I mean, I like doing horror because the sets are so much fun. Um, all the... Uh, on any, like, comedy or, like, other drama stuff that I've worked on, the, the sets aren't as lively. I feel like, especially on, on... If you're doing a comedy, it's like all the... the all the laughs are on the camera. So the, the set dynamic is just... It's a, not up to par. And so if you're doing a horror film, when you're doing such horrific stuff and oftentimes very ridiculous stuff the sets are just really really fun and really lively and so you know you get splattered with blood or whatever and as soon as someone yells cut the crew breaks out laughing because it's hilarious yeah. um so i really yeah i like that aspect of it a lot I was over at a friend's place a while back, and we were checking out um, the Disco Exorcist. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, you're in that, obviously, uh -huh. and I, I really enjoyed it. What was your <laughs> experience like making that one? That one was really fun. I mean, that that one's so over the top. I mean, it's it's hard not to have fun on a film like that. And um, so that was my fifth or sixth film with um, Richard Griffin and so at that point we had gotten to know each other like really really well and like that he had creates this whole family dynamic on his sets which is awesome and so on that one especially like we were we would help out, out doing costuming or we built some of the sets or you know and like whatever needed to be done in order to get the movie made rather than just only being in front of the camera and then I mean, Richard just has such an amazing sense of humor <laughs> that, like, half the stuff in there, it's like, you have a script and you have everything you think you're going to shoot, and then Richard will be like, hang on, wait a second, why don't you try it this way? And then that is what ends up going into the movie, because it's just way more entertaining <laughs> than what was originally right. on paper. It's always nice to hear that when, when you have a filmmaker who brings that sense of fun to the project. It almost takes you back to, you know, the reason that you that you started doing movies or theater or whatever in the first place you wanted to have fun with it and it was a fun thing to do so it's always nice to hear when you have an experience like that that you know you get to dip your hands in some different paints and things like that and exactly. have a good time with it yeah definitely and get to see you know all different sides of the production because 
you can sometimes get very you know closed off and closed minded and focus only on what you do but part of making film is that it's a collaborative effort it's not just you it's everyone else's thoughts and opinions and vision and having it all work together is really the fun process yeah really if you're not a collaborative type of person filmmaking being in the film business is really not for you nope not for you <laughs> at all <laughs> you will be so frustrated <laughs> um I saw that you did something last year for Lifetime called the Ugly Christmas Sweater. Yeah, I did. <laughs> What's that all about? Um, so that is a series of, I think this is the first time that Lifetime did this, where they did like a series of shorts that they released um, over Christmas. And I completely didn't even know that it was playing until like two weeks ago or something like that <laughs> so you missed it i missed it so i never even saw it i mean like i'm not so i hope it came out well it yeah. was a really like fun cute script about um a girl that is trying to work her way up at you know the marketing company where she's working and her grandma she has a really great relationship with her grandma who makes her this ugly christmas sweater so she has to wear it um to you know not hurt her grandma's feelings and someone in a coffee shop ends up snapping a photo of her like with the, the Christmas sweater and her coffee cup being all like victorious and um, it goes like viral on social media and so her all the people at her marketing company are like oh this was such a good idea how did you come up with this and blah 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 <laughs> I'm gonna have my mom uh, DVR that see if I can check it out yeah go for it <laughs> maybe next Christmas <laughs> maybe it'll come around again I mean Lifetime does do that they oh, play yeah. the same Christmas movies over and over absolutely so. <laughs> I got a little soft spot for Lifetime movies, so. <laughs> There's a weird overlap between, like, Lifetime and horror. It's really, it's just, apparently the Wall Street Journal, like, did an article on this, like, not too long ago, because, I, I mean, I have several friends that are prolific horror writers and prolific Lifetime writers, so I don't know what it is <laughs> about those two where the overlap just, it just works. I like, had no idea. <laughs> You wouldn't think you it, would never think like that. at all, because you're, you're, they're at such opposite ends of the spectrum as far as you're concerned. That's but, really um, funny. Yeah, it's it's pretty interesting. Huh. So, on a little bit more of a serious note, I guess. Sure. What is your take on, you know, everything that's going on in Hollywood and in the film industry right now? The culture has been changing really quickly, in a very positive way, in in my opinion. What's your take on it? You know, what, what, where do you think things are going? Um, well, I mean, I think it's great. I think it's great that so many people are able to come out and talk about things that have happened to them and that it's put a lot of guys on notice to not continue acting this way because... I mean, everyone of all budget levels has stories of, you know, people that acted inappropriately. Not necessarily just men either, because it goes both ways. There are women that can be overly aggressive towards men as well. So it's gender equal. Um, but I think it is really good for people being able to say you can't treat me this way and to get rid of that you know, stereotype of the casting couch where you have to compromise yourself in order to get ahead. That's great. I also feel like there's a risk and that it could be going too far in that anyone can just come out and accuse anyone of saying anything without necessarily having any proof in their being damned in the court of public opinion, regardless of if it's true or not. And so I think that's a little scary. And I also feel like I mean, everyone has been in an uncomfortable situation where they've been hit on and they didn't like it. That's just part of life. <laughs> like, that's not a Me Too thing. That's not sexual harassment. That is just life. And I feel like a lot of guys now are afra afraid to even talk to a girl because they don't want it to in any way be, be misconstrued of some as some sort of, like, predatorial advance. And I think that in that way, we're basically cutting the balls off of our men <laughs> and that's um not that's not a good thing to do because i would say in some if you want the advance a lot of women like men to be aggressive it, but if the advance is unwanted that's where it starts to cross the line so there's kind of a gray area there um that i just i hope we don't go so far that there's no there's no coming back and that you know guys will be afraid to make any sort of right. Um, pursuing of someone they're interested in. Yeah, it seems like there's still a lot of sort of 
<clears throat> feeling out for how we're going to handle a lot of this. People are Definitely. still trying to get a a grip on it. I don't want this to sound sexual, but it is accidentally. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Paul cut that part out. <laughs> um well obviously it's B movie mania, so we're yeah. all about the B movies here. Do you have any personal favorites in terms of, you know, cult cinema, low budget films that Ooh. that are are near and dear to your heart? That's a, that's kind of hard for me to answer cuz like I feel like I didn't grow up and watching any sort of B movies. Really? Like I didn't I didn't know that that was a thing. Like my my family was not into horror. They weren't into genre films, they weren't into sci-fi films. They, you know, only saw big budget you know talking animals and (laughs) stuff that was in the theaters so I'm kind of I kind of don't have any of that like nostalgia that a lot of other people do towards b-movies that they watched as a kid that they really love um I've really only like grown to know them as an adult and as an actor so um it's pretty much the same for me (laughs) I mean I had kind of one of those strict uh, midwestern christian upbringings where there's a lot of stuff that i just wasn't allowed to see oh me too yeah so you kind of have to play a little bit of catch up later on you know you absolutely do yeah. and like i mean like i didn't see goonies until i was like 20 because i didn't even know that it was like a thing yeah <laughs> and it, i mean yeah it was great like but it's not the same as like when you see it as a kid it's right. just a different it's a different take on it. Horror movies, though, or anything like that? Recently, I recently I saw, for the first time, actually, which I'm kind of ashamed to admit, but um, I saw Creature from the Black Lagoon. Nice. Which was so good. Yes. It was so good, and I was like, I felt so sad for the creature. Right. Like, poor creature. That was, like, people are terrible. They come into your home and start fucking stuff up and <laughs> like, and then they come after you and it's your fault. And yeah. like, that was not, yeah, it's got that a little, was not okay. It's got some emotional weight to it. Yeah. So I think that, I mean, Creature definitely, now that I've seen it, <laughs> definitely um, now has a special, a special place in my heart. Highly recommend um, if you haven't checked out, there's two uh, sequels to it. Highly recommend those as well. Yes. Uh, which is what? Return? Return to the... No. Yeah, it's either Return of the Creature... Revenge of the Creature. Revenge of the Creature, that's yeah. it. Yep. Mm-hmm. And then the third one is called um, The Creature Walks Among Us. That's right. And it's, it, it yes. takes a real interesting twist. And that's kind of... Because, I mean, the reason I saw that recently was because, you know, The Shape of Water, which is kind of... I mean... I know, haven't seen it yet. It's beautiful completely beautiful and it's definitely Guillermo's homage love letter yeah. to creature and takes takes elements I think from um from at least what I've heard yeah. <laughs> creature walks among us um does and sprinkles that throughout the film so hardly ever get to the theater anymore I know I even it's expensive <laughs> I bought movie pass yeah and like I just I had it for three months and I paid for it for three months and I never went I didn't really? even use it I was like <laughs> So I canceled it. I'm like, all right, well, it's too busy. This is how like, yeah, I yeah. just like couldn't. I mean, there wasn't anything in the theater either that I was really like, I have to see this. It right. was more like, well, I have it, so I have to use it, and then picking something. Didn't happen. And I just didn't. Yeah. Didn't get around to oh, it. Oh well. It's terrible. Um, I know you have lots of projects coming up. Uh, anything that you would like to mention for our listeners? Sure. Um, I just worked on a feature called um, 30 Weight. That's not up on IMDb yet. <laughs> um, and that is being directed by Dwayne Whitaker and it stars Daniel Roebuck. Um, and that's more of like a drama well starts off as a comedy then kind of turns into like a drama thriller road trip sort of film. Um, So outside of horror, but I think it's going to be a pretty good project. Um, And then I also have um, a comedy web series, that horror comedy web series, um, that I'm part of called uh, Squad Ghouls, (laughs) which Amalia is directing. And I've worked with Amma before on a short film from Hell She Rises, which is currently still playing in festivals and still getting awards and all that sort of stuff. And she's amazingly talented, so I can't wait for this to get going and get off the ground because it's going to be a lot of fun and the scripts are really funny um and then there's also um a short film that i am doing with um todd norwood who i worked with back in massachusetts on the series um the salinger spies which was 
really, really fun and was like an action comedy sort of thing. And so this new one that we're doing is more like a buddy drama kind of project. But um, yeah, so we have that coming up, which I'm excited about. And then I have a horror anthology that I'm working on. Um, with uh, Jessica Sonborn and Chris Malturo, who I worked with them on The Haunting of Alice D and with them on Chupacabra Territory. And so now this anthology series is, I think they're calling it Holiday of Horrors. And um, each of the episodes is centered around a holiday. And the overall, that overall series is being produced by Wesley Alley, um, who recently worked on um, Twin Peaks. Cool. So, yeah. <laughs> Do you know uh, Megan Hensley then? Oh, yeah, I know Megan, She's totally. A of mine. Yeah, Megan's great. She yeah. was in, I should mention for the listeners, she was in, she was also in uh, The Haunting of Alice. Yeah, D. she was she was the lead. Cool. Like she was yeah, main girl in that. And she was in Chupacabra territory too. Oh, I just picked it up a couple weeks ago, yeah. so I need to watch that for yeah. sure. That's so, awesome. She's in, so yeah, she knows Jess and Chris and like that whole that whole circle. So. I was uh, I, I went home for Christmas. And uh, I, I was in a family video, just browsing. I'm like, Chupacabra Territory. Picked it up. <laughs> turned it around. Saw you. I'm like, yep, getting it. <laughs> Good. So can't wait to check that one out. Chris will be glad to hear that. <laughs> yes. And then I also want to mention, I definitely need to check out that 30 Weight, is it? 30 Weight, yes. So. I'm a sucker for road trip movies. Mm-hmm. And Danny Roebuck is a friend of mine as well. Oh, so really? So check that out. That, yeah, that's perfect. So yeah. that that's still being shot. I, I'm done. My part's over. But um, yeah, I'm hoping that'll be, that should be pretty fun once that's all done and comes just, out. So. Just out of uh, personal curiosity what well, what was it like working with Danny he's a great guy oh he's great yeah yeah he's super great he's super nice super fun and I mean he's just he's helping out you know, Dwayne because him and Dwayne are good friends and so they're you know going around doing whatever he needs to get done on set in order to get the movie made and he's like that so, yeah he's just he's a really great yeah really great guy really friendly and good actor yeah yeah totally so he was great to work with well, where can people go if they want to keep up to date with all the stuff that you got ah. going on, social media and whatnot? Yeah. Um, so I'm on all of the social medias, mm-hmm. <laughs> where I try to be at least. Um, so yeah, I'm on Facebook so as Sarah Nicklin. I'm on Twitter, also as Sarah Nicklin, Instagram as well. Um, I do have a website, sarahnicklin.com. I'm currently doing a redesign on it, so there's nothing on there at the moment. It's just a landing page, but um, you you can check there and check back periodically and I'll get that up at some point when it's cool. when I get the time so cool and of course we will post links down to all that uh, below uh, on bmoviemania.com so you can check out all that Sarah thank you so much for chatting thank with me thank you yeah great getting you know a chance to finally do this and uh, continued success with all all the projects uh, coming up in the future thank you so much Listen up, maniacs. Do you have a question or a comment? Would you like to uh, send some bourbon to Uncle Lloydie? You can contact the gang on Facebook at B-Movie Mania. You can also drop them a line at bmoviemania.com. Reach out. Touch them. They are touching themselves. And they might just reach back. I'm Lloyd Kaufman saying, see you next time on B-Movie Mania. Woohoo!